Fala galera do Fight de Corriba, direto de Miami, with MVP. Nice to meet you, MVP. Hey, How are you, sir? I'm doing very, very good. You know, getting uh, getting all the media stuff out of the way, but feeling good. Welcome to UFC. <laughs> uh, how does it feel? Is it too different already? Yeah, it, again, there's, there's certain uh, elements that are the same, you know, similar process, but I feel like it's way more and just more organized and just, just done more professionally and smooth. When you say way more, way more interviews and stuff like that? Yeah, there's a, there's, you just, you just, it's, you realize how big, like, you know how big UFC is, but when I'm doing all the media, it's like we did media for Japan, media for, you know, um, Australia, media, for, and it's just like, yeah, forget, Brazil. Yeah, and Brazil, you know, and I forget that how big UFC is to the world. And yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot, but it's exciting to also feel that, yeah, it's going out to a, a, lot, of, a lot of new eyes. Yes, uh, there is a question a lot of MMA fans they ask you. Why did it take so long for you to come to <laughs> UFC? For me, it's just it's it's all to do with timing. You know, if it's not the right timing, or I don't feel that I'm going to be valued at what I I know I should be valued, it's just not the right time. But I think everything is aligned. Everything happens for a reason. I'm here now, and it's going to be uh, it's going to be an exciting time. Perfect. Talk. Uh, let's talk about Kevin Holland. Uh, skill by skill, how do you guys match up? Yeah, striking wise, he's he's not touching me. Um, he's 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 a tough guy though. Uh, I give him his props. He's very entertaining. Um, he's got some slick jujitsu on the floor as well. You know, those long arms can be dangerous if you your head gets caught in the wrong place. Long arms can be dangerous. I've seen him catch out a couple people. So um, this. These are all the things that we've been catering for, working and working on. But strike for strike, he's he's not he's not touching me. And what kind of challenge does he bring to you in the octagon? I mean, let's talk about the mental part, right? Mm -hmm. he's, he's famous because he talks a lot of he trash talk during the fight. Are you ready for that? Is a kind of uh, have you seen that? Have you faced that before? Actually, yeah, yeah. And then like, and I'm very present, so. You know, I may I may just talk back. <laughs> I'm very present, very uh, very in control. But it doesn't affect anything. He can talk as much as he wants. Talking doesn't knock me out. Mm -hmm. But he can talk, and then I can punch him. He can talk, and I can kick him. And I'm sure I'll end up uh, winning that exchange if he's if he's going to try and beat me with words. You don't have anybody in your camp to emulate this kind of stuff, like somebody trash talking during the the training, right? No, because it's, it's it's not a relevant skill. Uh, and like I said, I'm not a person that is uh, wound up or easily frustrated or an emotional person in that in that sense. So, yeah, there's no real, there was no real need. Actually, weird enough, I actually sparred someone that was talking, but it, it was in his own language <laughs> during it. Um, but uh, yeah, I, again, it, I didn't. There's nothing to respond to. I just go in there and I just do my thing. Perfect. Yeah, your striking, it's beautiful to watch the way you move, the way you set up your, your striking techniques. Do you see somebody in the same level in your, your division here in the UFC? Uh, same level um, of, of striking, uh, no, of style, stylistically. Um, obviously, Wonderboy uh, Thompson, very sim we come from very similar backgrounds. Mm -hmm. um, So yeah, in terms of stylistically, but I just I just feel unique. So I you know I I I I just don't feel like I compare to anybody. You come to the UFC, you are 36, almost 37, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you are facing the top 13. If you win Saturday now, most likely you're gonna fight even maybe top 10, whatever. Do you feel your way to get the belt? Is it's going to be shorter than usual? Yeah, I, I believe so. I think this is one of the reasons why I've got an opponent like Kevin is because, you know, they're like, yeah, this is the top. This is at the top. This is where we want you. Uh, you win this, you go, you know, as you say, you keep pushing forward, get another big fight, and then look for the title. So do you have any specific opponent in mind? Somebody, even before you signed to the UFC, did you have somebody in mind that oh, I want, maybe one day I would like to face this guy? No, there's nobody. There's nobody over here that um, inspires me to want to fight them in any way, shape, or form. Whoever's in the way, that's who I signed the contract for. Um, but the only one that I would like to fight more so because of the magnitude of what what it does and how big it could be, especially in the UK, 
is uh, the man with the belt right now, Leon Edwards. Awesome. British. Yeah. <laughs> uh, two more questions. Uh, for the fans that don't know you, what do you bring for the, the welterweight division? Why they should uh, look to your fights? I'm a new lease of life in the division. I think it's a great division anyway, but to have somebody with my swag and energy and showmanship, again, people, just, just to the UFC full stop, I feel like people don't deliver that uh, enough, that uh, showmanship. And I have that and big knockouts as well. So that's what you need to look forward to. Perfect. As I told you before, I'm from Brazil. And, you know, like all the MMA fans in Brazil, they know you specifically for one fight when we're facing Evangelista Cyborg. Yeah, yeah. It is the, the biggest highlight. I guess it is the biggest yeah, highlight yeah. in our career. That knockout was impressive. Um, do you remember all the details about that, that knockout? And because the damage was kind of unique. Yeah, no, obviously uh, the damage was. We, weird enough, we was practicing. And this is, I always say, I, I give all credit to my coach for how it happened. When um, when I crossed over from kickboxing, the kickboxing style that I used, we didn't use knees. I had no low kicks, I had no elbows. So this wasn't something that was in my, you know, my locker, in something that I, I would use. And my coach was like, um, okay, you know, Cyborg, he likes to lean forward heavy and then swing big overhands. And he catches people out because people like to lean away when he puts his head forward and then he goes over the top and lands a punch. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you know what? It's going to be safer for you to go up. So instead of going backwards and potentially getting caught with a punch, jump up. The worst that's going to happen is he hits your chest, hits your body. You can, you can keep moving. Um, so we started drilling the knee over and over and over again. Every time I had a spar, I would drill it. And I, he knows I got such good control. I, even with my teammates, I'd be able to stop the knee just there and then carry on moving. And, um, you know, it came to that, that, that day of the fight. I was, you know, the first round, uh, I made a little mistake. He got a good takedown. I tried to go for a leg lock. Anyway, it didn't, you know, nothing, not much happened. Stood back up, went back to plan A. You know, I'm, I'm waiting for him to press forward. He really wasn't. He was, he was a little bit too intimidated from my movement. I'm landing shots. I landed a nice body shot, which really hurt him. He, you know, he tried to hide it, but, you know, it hurt him. And I knew a lot of the times when people are damaged, when people are hurt, that's when they, 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 they go for, okay, I need to get this guy now because it's getting dangerous. So I was waiting. I was putting pressure. I was waiting, waiting. He leaned forward. I knew exactly where I was going to go. Jumped up, landed in the knee, clean. Obviously, he landed and turned over. So I didn't actually, I never saw any damage outside of knowing that it's over. No, I thought maybe I, you know, I caught his nose, no, my, broke his nose because he was holding his face and he's kicking his legs, you know, done my celebration. Uh, and I didn't actually see the damage until the, the following day when um, my sister had told me, what, you know, she sent me a picture of what, of what happened. But, um, you know, he's, uh, first thing he was thinking of making sure he's okay, he was okay. Um, and, um, but just what a spectacular night and what a memorable occasion for, for me and my book.